Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. We believe in the gospel message that Mr. Womack preaches, and we believe in his ministry. And furthermore, we believe in the, the level of integrity that they operate with financially. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my third week teaching on 20 revelations that will change your life, and I'm only on revelation number five out of these 20. And there's no way I can go back and summarize everything. What I've been talking about starting yesterday was talking about UNCONDITIONAL LOVE, GOD'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. MOST CHRISTIANS WOULD SAY, OH, YES, I KNOW THAT GOD LOVES ME, BUT THEN THEY PUT ALL OF THESE CONDITIONS ON IT. AND THEY SAY, WELL, IF I, YOU KNOW, AM LIVING A HOLY LIFE, AND IF I'M PRAYING, AND IF I'M STUDYING, AND IF I'M DOING THESE THINGS, THEN GOD LOVES ME. YOU KNOW, PART OF THAT COMES FROM A MISUNDERSTANDING OF THE OLD TESTAMENT. I HADN'T GOT TIME TO COMPLETELY TEACH ON THIS. I DO HAVE TEACHING THAT GOES INTO ALL OF THESE DETAILS. MATTER OF FACT, ONE OF THE THINGS THAT WE'RE OFFERING THIS WEEK uh, ON TODAY'S PROGRAM IS MY TEACHING THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS. AND I HAVE THIS BOOK RIGHT HERE THAT IS 430 PAGES THAT IS A VERSE-BY-VERSE -verse TEACHING THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS, AND WE'RE OFFERING THAT. AND uh, ANYWAY, the, THE TEACHING SHOWS THAT THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW, IT WASN'T INACCURATE BUT IT'S BEEN MISUNDERSTOOD AND APPLIED. AND AGAIN, I'LL HAVE TO JUST REFER TO THESE MATERIALS BECAUSE IF I START TRYING TO EXPLAIN THIS IN DEPTH, I'LL GET STUCK THERE AND WON'T EVER GET BACK TO TALKING ABOUT THE UNCONDITIONAL LOVE OF GOD. BUT IN THE OLD TESTAMENT, PEOPLE WERE UNDER THE DECEPTION THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER THEY COULD BE HOLY ENOUGH FOR GOD TO ACCEPT THEM. AND THE REASON THAT GOD GAVE THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW, THERE WAS MULTIPLE PURPOSES BUT ONE OF THEM WAS TO KNOCK ALL OF THIS DECEPTION OUT OF US THAT WE COULD EVER BE WORTHY ENOUGH FOR GOD TO LOVE US. NOW, THAT'S, that's A RADICAL STATEMENT, AND MOST PEOPLE DON'T LOOK AT IT. MOST PEOPLE, like, OH, NO, GOD GAVE you ALL OF THE THINGS THAT WE HAD TO DO IN ORDER TO BE ACCEPTED. WELL, HE DID, BUT WHAT IT WAS, IT WAS SUCH A LIST. IT WAS BEYOND HUMAN ABILITY. NOBODY HAS EVER KEPT THE LAW EXCEPT JESUS. ALL OF US HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD, ROMANS 3, 23. AND THE LAW WAS GIVEN TO MAGNIFY, TO AMPLIFY SIN. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS IN, MAN, SO MANY PLACES. I'VE GOT TEACHING THAT GOES INTO GREAT DETAIL ON THIS. BUT THE LAW WAS GIVEN TO BREAK ANY DECEPTION THAT WE COULD EVER EARN GOD'S FAVOR. AND YET SOMEHOW RELIGION HAS TWISTED THINGS SO THAT IT SAYS JUST THE OPPOSITE OF THAT. IT SAYS, NO, IF YOU WILL COME TO CHURCH, IF YOU WILL PAY YOUR TITHES, IF YOU WILL READ THE BIBLE, IF YOU'LL PRAY SO MANY HOURS A DAY, IF YOU DON'T DIP OR CUSS OR CHEW OR GO WITH THOSE THAT DO AND ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS, THEN GOD WILL ACCEPT YOU. THAT'S THE OPPOSITE OF WHAT THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW WAS SAYING, AND YET MOST PEOPLE HAVE INTERPRETED THE LAW THAT WAY. WHAT IT WAS, THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW WAS SHOWING YOU HOW INCAPABLE YOU ARE OF EVER EARNING GOD'S FAVOR. LET ME TURN OVER AND READ TO YOU OUT OF DEUTERONOMY CHAPTER 28. Uh, IF YOU'RE FAMILIAR WITH THIS PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE, THIS IS WHAT YOU HAVE TO DO IN ORDER TO BE ACCEPTED WITH GOD BASED ON THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW. AND SO DEUTERONOMY CHAPTER 28 VERSE 1 SAYS, AND IT SHALL COME TO PASS IF THOU SHALT HEARKEN DILIGENTLY UNTO THE VOICE OF THE LORD THY GOD TO OBSERVE AND TO DO ACCORDING TO ALL HIS COMMANDMENTS WHICH I COMMAND THEE THIS DAY, THAT THE LORD THY GOD WILL SET THEE ON HIGH ABOVE ALL NATIONS OF THE EARTH, AND ALL THESE BLESSINGS SHALL COME ON THEE AND OVERTAKE THEE, IF THOU SHALT HEARKEN UNTO THE VOICE OF THE LORD THY GOD. I'VE ACTUALLY HEARD PEOPLE TAKE THESE VERSES AND SAY, SEE, GOD WANTS TO BLESS YOU, BUT WHAT YOU'VE GOT TO DO IS HEARKEN DILIGENTLY. IF YOU'RE PRAYING AN HOUR A DAY, YOU'VE GOT TO START PRAYING TWO HOURS A DAY. IF YOU'RE LEADING ONE PERSON A WEEK TO THE LORD, YOU'VE GOT TO LEAD TWO PEOPLE A WEEK TO THE LORD. AND THEY BASICALLY JUST SAY THAT IT'S BASED ON YOUR PERFORMANCE. THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT DEUTERONOMY 28.1 SAYS. IT SAYS YOU HAVE TO HEARKEN DILIGENTLY UNTO THE VOICE OF THE LORD THY GOD TO OBSERVE AND TO DO ACCORDING TO ALL THESE COMMANDMENTS. ALL OF THEM. IT DIDN'T SAY DO 90% OF THEM. DO THE BEST YOU CAN AND THEN GRACE WILL MAKE UP THE DIFFERENCE. NO, IF YOU ARE GOING TO USE DEUTERONOMY 28, 1 AND 2, YOU HAVE TO HEARKEN TO DO ALL OF THEM. 
Put this together with James chapter 2, verse 10 that says, If you keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, you become guilty of all. So maybe you don't dip or cuss or chew or go with those that do. You are living a holy life. But if you have any failure in your life whatsoever, then instead of getting the blessing, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, you get the curse, Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. And see, this is where most people are. They believe that God exists. They believe that God is good. They believe that God could heal, could deliver. They believe that these things can happen, but they tie it to their performance. And the moment you do that, it's like a chain. You know, and we say that a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. If you are a link in this chain, and if your performance is necessary for God to do all of these things, well, then you're going to fail every time because you are not perfect. And there's some of you that know you aren't perfect. There's some of you that think you are, but the truth is you aren't, and you will fail sooner or later. And Satan, as long as you are looking at yourself and relating God, loving you based on how well you perform, you will never experience the fullness of God's love. You know, this week I've already shared my testimony how it was at my very worst when I finally realized that my righteousness was like filthy rags. That's when the unconditional love of God flooded into my life. And it's only when you recognize that it is God's goodness, not your goodness, that causes Him to love you. That's the only time that you can ever really fully appreciate God's love. If you think somehow or another you deserve God's love, then you haven't fully understood it because it's unconditional. It's not based on your goodness. I've already used these verses. Romans 5, 8, God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die for you after you had your act together. You can't come to God and say, God, I promise you, if you will save me, then I'll do this, this, and this. You can't base God's love on your performance. It is unconditional, unearned, undeserved love. And if you don't understand that, then you don't truly understand God's love. If you think that it's conditional upon your performance, then you're going to be the weak link in that chain. Your heart will condemn you, and you just will never fully understand God's love. In order for you to really understand, receive, enjoy, and benefit from God's love, you have to understand it's unconditional. You have to understand that it's not tied to your goodness. God loves you because He is love, not because you are lovely. Let me share some scriptures with you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is often called the love chapter because it just is talking about how important God's kind of love is. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which in the King James here, the word charity is used for God's kind of love. And in most modern translations, it'll say love. But I still like charity because, you know, again, I've mentioned this, but love has gotten to where people call, they call it love when two men love each other and have sex with each other. They call it love when two women have sex with each other. That's not love. That's lust. It's evil. It's demonic. And so if you just use the word love, love has come to mean so many different things to many different people. But the word charity is specifically identifying God's kind of love, a love that is unconditional. Like, for instance, we call Salvation Army and the goodwill and some things like that charities today. You know why they use the word charity to describe those things? Because you are giving and helping people without any strings attached, not saying, if you will straighten up, then I'll help you. No, it's a charity. It's unconditional. So this really is a great word, even though it's not the way that most people would speak about this today. So 1 Corinthians 13, 1 again says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, God's kind of love... I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Man, this is talking about the gift of speaking in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14 both talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so right in the middle of that teaching, it's saying that you can operate in the gifts 
of the Holy Spirit. But if it's not motivated by love, then all you're doing is just making noise. It's not saying that love is superior to the gifts. It's saying that the gifts operating by love are superior to just operating in the gifts for the purpose of strife or contention or something like that. And then he says in verse 2, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, God's kind of love, I am nothing. This is just emphasizing that God's kind of love is what makes everything else work. In verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Boy, that is a radical, radical statement. You know, today we have people that are in the Islamic faith, and they are doing jihad and blowing themselves up I'VE ACTUALLY SEEN uh, VIDEOS OF PEOPLE THAT SET THEMSELVES ON FIRE SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER THINKING THAT THEY ARE DOING PENANCE AND SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER THIS WOULD EARN THEM FAVOR WITH GOD. THIS IS SAYING THAT YOU COULD EVEN KILL YOURSELF. YOU COULD GIVE AWAY EVERYTHING YOU'VE GOT TO OTHER PEOPLE, BUT IF IT'S NOT MOTIVATED BY GOD'S KIND OF LOVE, WHICH IS AN UNCONDITIONAL LOVE, IT PROFITS YOU NOTHING. THESE PEOPLE THAT ARE KILLING THEMSELVES AND KILLING OTHER PEOPLE, THINKING THAT THAT IS EARNING THEM FAVOR WITH GOD, THAT'S NOT GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. THEY ARE DOING IT TRYING TO MANIPULATE GOD, TRYING TO FORCE GOD. YOU KNOW, THERE'S A MAN, MOHAMMED FARIDI, WHO IS ACTUALLY A GRADUATE OF OUR BIBLE COLLEGE, AND THIS GUY IS AWESOME. HE GOT CONVERTED FROM ISLAM, AND HE WAS DOING JIHAD, AND HIS GOAL WAS TO DIE FOR ALLAH. BUT THE REASON HE WAS DOING IT WASN'T MOTIVATED BY LOVE. HE WAS DOING IT TRYING TO EARN FAVOR. HE SAID THE ONLY WAY YOU CAN GUARANTEE THAT YOU COULD GET INTO HEAVEN WAS TO DIE A MARTYR. HE WAS DOING IT TRYING TO MANIPULATE, TO EARN GOD'S FAVOR. AND ACCORDING TO THESE VERSES, THAT PROFITS YOU NOTHING. YOU CAN'T DO ANYTHING. YOU CAN'T GIVE AWAY ENOUGH. YOU CAN'T DENY YOURSELF ENOUGH TO EARN GOD'S FAVOR. IT'S A GIFT. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. There is a payment for sin, and that's death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life is a gift. It's a gift to be received, not a wage to be earned. And that's what this is saying. God's kind of love is unconditional, and the moment you start tying God's love, acceptance for you to your performance, THEN YOU HAVE MISSED OUT ON GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. IT IS UNCONDITIONAL. IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT THERE'S NOTHING YOU HAVE TO DO TO RECEIVE IT. You, HE DOESN'T FORCE IT ON YOU. YOU HAVE TO HUMBLE YOURSELF AND RECEIVE IT AS A GIFT. BUT IF YOU ARE TRYING TO EARN IT, WHICH IS BASICALLY WHAT RELIGION IS TELLING PEOPLE TODAY, THEN YOU CHEAPEN THE WHOLE THING. THERE ARE MULTITUDES OF PEOPLE WHO WOULD SAY, OH, YES, GOD LOVES ME, BUT THEN THEY'D TURN RIGHT AROUND AND SAY, I KNOW WHY GOD HADN'T ANSWERED MY PRAYER BECAUSE I DIDN'T STUDY THE WORD, BECAUSE I DIDN'T PRAY, I DIDN'T DO SOMETHING, AND YOU TIE GOD'S KIND OF LOVE TO YOUR PERFORMANCE. YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND GOD'S LOVE IF THAT'S THE WAY YOU'RE RESPONDING. GOD LOVES YOU UNCONDITIONALLY, INDEPENDENT OF WHAT YOU DESERVE. HE GOES ON TO SAY IN THE NEXT VERSE, CHARITY, GOD'S KIND OF LOVE SUFFERS LONG AND IS KIND. DID YOU KNOW YOU CAN APPLY THIS TO PEOPLE AND YOU CAN TELL PEOPLE that her, WHO ARE SAYING THAT THEY'RE OPERATING IN LOVE, BUT IF IT'S GOD'S KIND OF LOVE, IT SUFFERS LAW AND IT'S KIND. DID YOU KNOW SOME OF THE HOMOSEXUAL, LGBTQ, XYZ CROWD uh, TODAY IS SITTING THERE SAYING, YOU JUST NEED TO BE LOVING, YOU NEED TO BE TOLERANT, AND YET THEY ARE THE MOST INTOLERANT PEOPLE. THEY WILL NOT TOLERATE ANYBODY WHO DISAGREES WITH THEM, WHO HAS a DIFFERENT OPINION ON SOMETHING, AND YOU COULD APPLY THIS TO THEM AND SAY THAT WHAT YOU'RE CALLING LOVE ISN'T LOVE BECAUSE YOU DON'T SUFFER LONG. YOU AREN'T KIND. MAN, THEY ARE INTOLERANT. THEY'RE MEAN. Uh, YOU CAN JUST LOOK AT THE WAY THEY'RE RESPONDING LIKE ON THE ABORTION ISSUE AND PEOPLE ARE TORCHING uh, PRO-LIFE PREGNANCY CENTERS THAT HELP uh, WOMEN AND STUFF LIKE THIS. THEY SAY THAT THEY'RE LOVING AND KIND, BUT THEY AREN'T. THEY'RE VICIOUS. THEY'RE MEAN. YOU CAN LOOK AT ANTIFA AND ALL OF THE PEOPLE THAT IF THERE'S ANY KIND OF A PARADE, THEY COME OUT AGAINST THEM AND THEY, they DO ALL OF THIS STUFF. THAT'S NOT GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. SO YOU COULD APPLY ALL OF THESE VERSES, VERSES 4 THROUGH 8, AND YOU COULD APPLY THIS DIRECTLY TO PEOPLE AS A 
test to see if they're operating in God's kind of love. But I want to apply this directly to God. Yes, it's true that if we have God's kind of love in us, this is how we'll act, but it's also true that God's kind of love, this is how He'll act towards us. So let's go through this and read it and apply it from God towards us and describing God's kind of love. In verse 4, God's kind of love suffers long and is kind. Did you know God is long-suffering? Most people believe that God's got a short fuse and that, boy, He gets ticked off easily. I had a man come to me one time and he said he pictured God as an old, old man with a huge, long beard leaning over the banister of heaven with a lightning bolt ready to strike you the first time you got out of line. You might not describe it exactly that way, but that's how most people see God as this tyrant who is so demanding that if you miss it in the slightest area, here comes His wrath and punishment. And yet this says, God's kind of love suffers long and is kind. Did you know that God is kind towards you? I don't think most people would characterize God as being kind. They might characterize Him as being just, as being holy, which He is, all of those things, but He's also kind. God's kind of love is kind. Charity, God's kind of love, envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. All of these words, these are old English words, but it just means it's not self-centered. Did you know that God thought more of you than He thought of Himself? Again, I quoted these verses already, but over in Philippians chapter 2, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He was, he was God. He created everything. Colossians chapter 1, there was nothing created that wasn't created by Jesus. He existed from eternity past, and yet He loved us so much that He limited Himself and inhabited a physical body and went through 33 years of being human. Now, he wasn't only human. He was God Almighty in His spirit, but He was inhabiting a human body, a sinless human body, but it was a human body with all of the limitations. He got tired and hungry and felt pain and did all of this and ultimately gave Him His life for us. He thought more of us than He thought of Himself. You know, in the Old Testament, it says we're supposed to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and Jesus even quoted that in Matthew chapter 22. But then in John chapter 13, He says, A new commandment I'm giving unto you, that you love others the way that I have loved you. That's even better than loving people the way that you love yourself, because some of us don't really love ourselves the way that we should. And so loving others the way that God loved us is even superior to that. And He put us first. This is what these verses are talking about. God's kind of love, He was thinking more about you and about me than He was about Himself. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. And I tell you, many people don't see God that way. They see God as very easy to get ticked off, as very easy to offend. But the truth is, He's long-suffering. He's kind. He is not putting Himself first. He loves us more than He loves Himself. Now, this does not mean that He's going to be unjust. He is holy and He's just. And if people don't accept His forgiveness that has been offered, if they don't accept the sa Savior, Jesus, that provided a payment for our sins, then they'll have to answer for their own sins. So this isn't saying that He's forever suffering. It says He's long-suffering. But there is a justice and a holiness, and if you don't accept Jesus personally, you'll have to answer for your own sins. Praise God, nobody has to do that. You know, we've got a number on the screen. You could call and you could pray with somebody 24-7 on our helpline, and if right now you recognize that, man, you haven't received this love, you could receive it. Nobody has to go to hell, but God is holy, and He loves us. He's long-suffering. And if we would just receive it, He would offer forgiveness to any single person. In verse 5, it says, this is talking about charity. God's kind of love does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Again, most people don't apply this to God, but God is not easily provoked. God does not seek His own. Now, again, He's holy and just, and ultimately everything is going to be reconciled. You can either receive 
total relationship with God through the payment that Jesus made, or you'll have to pay for your own sins. So there is a uh, day of judgment coming. There is a reckoning coming, but God is long-suffering, and He is wanting you to receive His mercy. It is unconditional. There are some people watching this that think, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what God's done. You don't know how much God has sacrificed for you. I'm telling you that regardless of what you have done or have not done, there is complete forgiveness. There is complete cleansing. There is complete restoration for any person who will just receive the unconditional love of God and not limit it because of some failure on your part. I know that's a huge statement, and I'm ministering to billions of people all over the world, and some people are thinking, you don't know what I've done. Some of you might be mass murderers. Did you know that Moses was a murderer, and he wrote five books of the Bible plus one of the Psalms? Did you know that David was a murderer, murdered a person to cover up his sin, and yet David is one of the greatest kings and one of the greatest characters of the Old Testament? Did you know that Paul murdered people, and yet he wrote half of the books of the New Testament? Did you know that the majority of the Bible was written by people who had murdered? Not to say that God approved of that and that that was something that He liked, but it shows you that God can forgive anybody. Paul even said that he was an example to other people, that if God could save him, a person who was persecuting and murdering Christians, then God could save anybody. There is nobody watching this program, I don't care what you've done, that is beyond God's grasp. JESUS HAS PAID FOR THE SINS OF THE ENTIRE WORLD. It SAYS THAT OVER IN 1 JOHN chapter 2, VERSE 2. HE'S THE PROPITIATION FOR OUR SINS. THAT MEANS THE ATONING SACRIFICE FOR OUR SINS, AND NOT FOR OURS ONLY, BUT ALSO FOR THE SINS OF THE WHOLE WORLD. THIS MEANS THAT GOD DIDN'T ONLY DIE FOR PEOPLE WHO ARE CHRISTIANS, HE DIED FOR PEOPLE WHO AREN'T CHRISTIANS. IF A PERSON DIES AND GOES TO HELL, IT'S NOT GOING TO BE BECAUSE THEIR SINS WEREN'T PAID FOR. THEY WERE PAID FOR BY JESUS. YOU JUST DIDN'T ACCEPT THE PAYMENT. I'm doing everything I can right now to tell you that God wants you to accept it. It's unconditional. Regardless of how badly you think you have lived, God loves you in spite of who you are, not because of who you are. And He is offering you relationship right now through grace, not through justice. And if you would receive it, YOU COULD BE BORN AGAIN RIGHT NOW. YOU COULD HAVE YOUR HEART CHANGED AND YOU COULD RECEIVE THIS UNCONDITIONAL LOVE OF GOD THAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT. YOU KNOW, AGAIN, WE'VE GOT A NUMBER ON YOUR SCREEN AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO CALL. THERE ARE PEOPLE WHO WILL PRAY WITH YOU AND WHO WILL HELP YOU TO RECEIVE THIS SALVATION. THEY'LL ANSWER QUESTIONS AND PRAY FOR YOU. AND THEY'LL ALSO HELP YOU WITH THESE MATERIALS THAT WE'RE OFFERING. I'M GIVING AWAY THIS LITTLE FREE BOOKLET ENTITLED 20 REVELATIONS THAT WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE AND THEN WE HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S THAT WERE MADE FROM THIS VERY TELEVISION PROGRAM THAT YOU'VE BEEN WATCHING, AND WE ALSO HAVE A USB THAT HAS BOTH OF THOSE AUDIO AND uh, VIDEO ON THERE. AND THEN I'M OFFERING TEACHING FROM THE BOOK OF ROMANS. Uh, WE ARE ASKING FOR A DONATION ON THIS BECAUSE THIS IS A 430-PAGE BOOK. I'VE GOT CD'S AND DVD'S, AND I'VE ALSO GOT A TEACHING JUST ON GOD'S KIND OF LOVE TO YOU. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. God's love for you is unconditional. There's nothing you can do to make Him love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make Him love you less. Man, those are radical statements. And you know, very few people are saying these things, and yet, I believe it's true. This is what I've been sharing on my program. And this is what we share in our Karis Bible College, and we are in the process of trying to expand our facilities. We've actually had over 500 people who wanted to come to school and they didn't show up. And when we contacted them, they said that they couldn't find housing. So we are in the process of building student housing. We've got six dorms that we are building. We hope to have them finished by the start of next school year. We've already missed the start of this school year, but we're pushing for the September of 2024. At the rate we're going, we just won't be able to accomplish this. I need more people to help us. We need financial help. It's gonna cost about $53 million just to build these first six dorms. 
So I'd like to encourage you to go to awmi.net slash campus and look at a flyover that we have where our architects put together an artist rendering of what these buildings are gonna look like. You can actually go inside and see what they're gonna look like. And we've got a lot of buildings and things to do. And I encourage you to go look at that and then help us to reach out. We've got so many people that are wanting to come and get established in these truths so that their life can change, but also so that they can go out and represent this to other people. And we just need help in order to be able to get it done. So check it out, awmi.net slash campus and look at the video and then you can become a foundation builder, a monthly partner with us and help get this Karis Bible College expansion completed. You know, on today's program, I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receiving salvation and speaking in tongues. And if you haven't received either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would like to encourage you to please call our helpline. We have that number right there on the screen and we have people waiting to pray with you. But I encourage you to call and receive either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We are the antidote for what's happening in this world. But you need to see beyond the physical, and I believe that the greatest days of the church are ahead. God has a word for you, God has a plan for you, and God is raising up an army that knows how to fight the right fight the right way. Andrew is offering his booklet, 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Additionally, Andrew mentioned his teachings, Romans, Paul's masterpiece on grace, and God's kind of love to you. Contact us today to receive these valuable resources. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on today's TV offer under the store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. Harris is taking it to the next level in Canada. We are raising up leaders in the body of Christ by equipping students to stand on the word and walk in their calling. I love Karis because it prioritizes the Word, and that's what changes you. We stand on the Word. Karis is a life changer. I have grown so much in the area that I know that God has called me to. If you would like to be a part of this, go to our website at karisbiblecollege.ca to find out more. 